this is the HS Expander. This is the first prototype and it's working pretty well. Let's take a little look at what this is. This glorious little nugget is the HS Expander. This is the first prototype that I've built. It's a device designed to program all the FM synthesizer goodness that is hidden in the Yamaha Electron HS organs. This organ is actually pretty magnificent. Um, it is completely FM based, but the real secret of these organs is, is that they are FM beasts. The FM chip in these organ, or chips as you'd say, is the YM2414. The same FM chip used in the Yamaha DX11 and the TX81Z, as well as several other Yamaha synths and even a Korg synth. Now the YM2414 is a 4 operator FM chip with 8 voices or 8 channels. Now a single one of those chips creates some very cool sounds. You may have heard the Yamaha DX11 or the TX81Z in some very popular uh, 80s and maybe even 90s uh, pop songs and electronic songs. And, uh, especially the lately bass is uh, very infamous from the TX81Z. And here comes the twist. These organs have multiple YM2414 chips inside of them. Uh, this particular organ has five of them. That's basically five DX11s in here. On top of that, organs are designed to layer sounds. Now you can stack four of those voices on the upper keyboard, three of those voices on the lower keyboard, and one voice you have for the bass pedals down here. So as you can imagine, with all that FM goodness in there, you could create some absolutely wild patches. The problem is, however, you don't have that much access to editing the FM voices. I hope this is a little bit viewable for you all, but this is the voice edit menu for uh, the FM voices. Um, you have access to all four operators, but in terms of parameters, you only have access to the output level and the envelope generator, which is attack, dk1, level, dk2, and release. So you do have access to the full like multi-stage envelope. Uh, you can do a lot with just these five parameters. I've made some really, really cool sounds uh, with just these five. But the YM2414 has so much more to offer. And that finally brings me to the HS Expander. This device exposes all 113 parameters per voice. Yes, that's 113 parameters. <laughs> it is a lot. Now, I did need to design a bit of an interesting um, user interface scheme for this, because that many parameters means either a lot of menu diving or a lot of buttons. And I decided, well, maybe I can use sliders for selection. So what I've done is have two sliders, one horizontal, one vertical. The vertical slider selects which category of parameters, as well as storage. So at the bottom we have storage here, and I've already stored some, uh, some patches on here. And we have keyboard settings, general voice settings, such as the algorithm and feedback, LFO1, LFO2. Yes, there are two LFOs on the YM2414. And then we get to the individual operators, such as uh, general volume settings, frequency settings, envelope, and miscellaneous, such as keyboard scaling, envelope generator shift, sustain, that kind of stuff. A nice thing also is that it gives access to the eight waveforms, which is another feature that is um, a bit more unique to uh, since like the DX11, DX21, DX100, TX81Z. Okay, so I just have uh, a standard strings uh, patch selected on the organ. <laughs> So that is one of the internal uh, preset sounds that you can select from the uh, multi-menu here. Oh yeah, I should probably mention first 
that you can power the HX Bender either from USB or from 9 to 12 volts um, wall adapter. So, and the USB um, connection will also be used, and I've updated this thing, for um, uploading and downloading voices. Because the internal storage only has um, 12 slots, so 4 pages of 3 slots. So that is a bit limited, um, but the idea is that the HS Expander, kind of what the name implies, also expands on the internal memory of the organ. Because the organ only has four user voice slots, so you can only store four custom sounds on it, which is very limited. So the Expander um, basically acts as its own memory separate from the user memory on the organ. It, um, it stores custom voices internally and you can recall voices from that internal memory and edit them and send them to the organ. Now when you send a voice to the organ by pressing the green button here you can select to which registration you want to send it. It doesn't send it to the user voices. Again, it's a separate thing. Now currently this prototype only has the upper orchestra, lower orchestra and lead. Uh, when I further updated it, it will also be able to send it to the percussive and the bass voices. So if I send this now to the upper orchestra, you hear, let me turn off the effects. So this is the basically initialized voice from the expander. Now upload it to the upper orchestra registration. This way you can combine both your own user voices that you made on the organ as well as custom voices you made with the HS Expander. Anyways. Now I have a basic initialized voice. Let's edit it. So after I've sent a voice to a registration, I can then further edit it and immediately hear the differences. For, for example, US stands for upper shift. This is the octave shift of the upper keyboard. And there we go. The upper keyboard is now shifted down by one octave. I can set it back to normal again. There's also a shift for the pedals. There is an aftertouch setting which currently doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, there is no like real documents on the SysX data provided by Yamaha. This is all, well, reverse engineering and guesswork. Both my, made by people before me as well as myself. So, aftertouch is still a bit of a question mark. We also have portamento level, portamento time, which is for the lead glide, which sort of works, but it's still a bit questionable and requires more research. And in the next category we have voice, we change the algorithm. Which currently doesn't do anything, because they only have operator 1 with a sine wave, so not very interesting. So actually let's do something about that first, shall we? So let's go to the operator settings. So we're now just setting the operator level. here you can go very high that's kind of an interesting sound okay now let's go back to voice change the algorithm let's go back to uh, algorithm one or zero rather So yeah, that's changing the feedback. Currently have LFO1 selected, which can do both um, pitch modulation as well as amplitude modulation. So let's give it a bit of a rate, turn on the depth. <laughs> this is sounding like a, a circuit bent uh, kids keyboard now. <laughs> let's uh, give the um, 
Oh yeah, the uh, LFOs, both LFOs have four waveforms, which is um, Sol. So slow it down a little bit. I hope nobody thinks that's an alarm. So we have Sol. We have... That is the square. We have triangle. And we have sample and hold. Which sounds like noise at high uh, rates, but when you slow it down... Yeah, as you can hear, you can make uh, very messed up sounds with that. The ensemble chorus makes everything better, doesn't it? Now we can also do amplitude modulation. As you can hear, nothing is happening now, yet. That's because you need to turn on amplitude modulation for every individual operator. Which means you can do like classic amplitude modulation. Or, if you do it on a modulator, You basically get like um, you basically modulate the depth of the um, frequency modulation, which creates a very different effect. It also depends on which operator you do it, of course. So that's an operator four, which makes the sound more consistent, but the uh, modulation depth of operator four is now being amplitude modulated. Now the second LFO is a little bit more basic and I will say I still need to kind of figure out the LFOs. The LFO structure is a little bit weird in the organ. LFO 2 is basically uh, the vibrato LFO. And there we go. And that also... So the LFO 2 is a lot more subtle. But you can create pretty cool patches with it. Um, actually, let me just switch back to the strings. Now even though I changed voice back to strings now, I can still just edit the same parameters because every parameter change is sent individually. So even though I'm editing a different voice, I could still change the the LFO. So you can kind of combine like um, an original voice with your own edits. Now in the future I will add an extra um, MIDI input so you can actually load voices on the uh, organ itself onto the expander. Now when you're done uh, editing your uh, little custom uh, sound you can switch to storage and then select one of the storage slots. Um, I think I'll just uh, store it here and I'll just press confirm, set the voice name. Uh, shall, we, shall we make this Koi? Sure. <laughs> I don't really feel about bothering entering the name. Entering the name is a little bit awkward with the slider but hey it works. And there we go. I now have Koi stored on um, the expander. Now say, I still have my string sound here. Let's say I wanna, I wanna load up uh, pad A. I just press the red button, ask for if I wanna load it. Yes, I do. As you can see, the parameters all have changed. Now, whilst in parameter edit, I can just say send the voice to upper orchestra. And there we go. That's my pad uh, voice. 
So yeah, as you can see, you can expand the capabilities of this organ tremendously just with a little device. Now, this project is open source. I will put all the information on my website. Do keep in mind, this is still a prototype, still the very first thing I got working. <laughs> um, so it's still a bit of a work in progress. Not all information may be entirely accurate. The code may still be a little bit messy. So keep that in mind, but I do want to, you know, put this out in the open so that other people can either build their own expander or that other people can iterate on it. Um, I'm also planning to build these on commission. So if you say like, oh, I'm not technical, but I would like one of these, you can always message me. So yeah, if you want to support this project too financially and you want to get something in return, uh, yeah, we could definitely uh, agree on something.